Hello everyone! Welcome back to Mad About Cards and Crafts. Today I am sharing my design team project for the Not Too Shabby Shop. I am using MFT's Hip Hip Hooray. I'm going to jump right in. I did stamp this onto Cougar Super Smooth cardstock. You can skip to 113045 if you don't want to see the coloring. I stamped it using my Misty and Gina K Designs Black amalgam ink. I am going to start by using some of these brown colors. Now I am using I believe the E30s, the lower numbers of the E30s. I can't see my screen very well and I don't have my notes right here beside me, but I started with my darkest color. The colors are up on the screen and will be in the description box below. I am using my darkest colors on the left side which is where I believe the shadows would be and then I will actually come in and decide that I'm going to add shadows to the right side as well and put my light source in the middle of his face so he is looking directly into the Sun so I will take my darkest color and I will shade the back side of him underneath his belly the uh, where his leg meets his belly or legs meet and then underneath the arms and underneath the chin and I will blend that out with my mid-tone I will leave a little bit of white space but use my lightest color and then I come in after I've gone over this a couple of times and swipe the entire thing with my mid-tone just to even out the coloring these cute little images, as soon as Jamie asked me what uh, stamp set I wanted to work with this month, I knew immediately that this stamp set illustrated by one of my favorite illustrators, Stacy Yakula, was the set that I wanted to use. I have had a die in my collection that I purchased from Jamie's shop that is manufactured by LDRS. It is called the Seesaw Slider. And what it does is it's going to allow my little critters to jump up and down, which goes perfectly with Hip Hip Hooray, right? Isn't that like the perfect two um, products to be putting together. I did not show them at the beginning. Everything will be listed in the description box below along with links to where you can purchase those. Links to Jamie's Not Too Shabby Shop. And uh, if you go over to her shop, I believe she still has free shipping with $35. And if you use her, her coupon code Jamie10, which will also be listed in the description box below, you will receive 10% off of your order. She also has a rewards program that you can sign up for. Make sure that you look for that because for every purchase you will get reward points that you can later cash in for discounts of uh, increments of five dollars off your orders. So I have finished coloring this little cutie up. I am using my R20 marker to give his the cheeks a little bit of rosiness color in the ears and then I will use my Sakura uh, gel pen and I will put uh, some freckles over the cheeks. Now Bears. I want to talk a little bit about bears. Here in the Black Hills, which is where I live in South Dakota, it's an absolutely beautiful area if you've never been here. Um, it's where Mount Rushmore is. We. It has been said that there are no bears here. No bears. And I moved here from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I lived in the Rocky Mountains for 14 years. It's a beautiful ski town, gorgeous place to live. We had everything. We had mountain lions, we had bears, we had moose. It, you run across a moose, that's pretty scary. Fortunately, I never did. But um, we had bears, and bear encounters were not uncommon. In fact, I had one in my yard at one time. Um, so, you know, it was kind of exciting that we didn't have any bears here. We do have mountain lions, but that being said, recently these videos have been popping up uh, over in Custer, which is in the southern hills, 
showing that there are indeed black bears now in the Black Hills. So they probably came by way of the Rocky Mountains into Wyoming and Wyoming into South Dakota. So yeah, now I have to be on the lookout for bears. Uh, this little cute hedgehog is uh, going to be colored with, I believe it's E35, 37, and 39. I am doing the same thing. I am coloring uh, the darkest on both the left and the right side of his head, doing a little bit of blending with my mid-tone and then using that lightest marker to fill him in. Apparently, I did not show the... Uh, colors that I used for the face and the belly of the hedgehog. I think I forgot to turn on my camera. I did color that red balloon using my R24 and 27. My R29, I went to use it and the tip is funky. So I need to replace the tip on that. It has lots of ink, but it's very funky. So I'm color coming in and coloring my cute little bunny with some W markers. I believe I'm using W1, 3, and 5, uh, doing the same, using the darker colors on the left and right side and blending those out with my mid-tone and then using my lightest color for the center. I did use... Uh, some blue markers I'm going to come in and color that pot that's in that wagon and I will show those blue colors that I used they are B37 and 39 to color the lines on the flag I did an okay job with that I probably could have done a little bit better but I free handed that which is not typically my forte I did take that W5 and the W3 and I did a little flicking where my little bunny's nose is to give it a little furry texture there. So back to the flag, I took my gel pen and I dotted in where I thought the stars would be. I did slip with my red pen and get a little bit into that white, but I fixed it using my white jelly roll pen. I just went over it a couple of times and it's, you know, not too terrible. It wasn't enough that I felt that I needed to start over. I am not going to show the coloring of the fox since I didn't use him on the project. I am going to end up cutting out just the wagon and using that little wagon on uh, this project. I will also use my um, lawn fawn uh, puffy cloud and stitched hillside borders and then the paper is also from an older MFT pack I don't think I have it in front of me but it will be listed in the description box below if you haven't subscribed to my channel I would absolutely love for you to subscribe ring the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video I typically upload videos on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays and leave me a comment let me know do you live in a place that has wildlife and if so what kind of animals um, not domestic because we all know that most places have dogs and cats. But uh, what kind of wild animals do you have in your area? And do you, are you a city person or a country person? I tend to be a little bit of both. I love both worlds. As I said, I absolutely love living in South Dakota. It is probably one of the, my favorite places to live. Uh, I also love Nevada and I go there quite frequently. So um, yeah, I'm a little bit country and a little bit city. Here's those blue markers that I used. You can see them there in the upper left hand corner. I uh, colored the wheels in using my black gel pen and, um, and then I was just using my micro, what is it called? It's a micron pen and I was drawing in the lines because I thought maybe I was going to use that fox, but I decided that I didn't want to do a slimline card, which has been a frequent go-to of mine. I absolutely love them. 
and instead I decided that I would go with a simple A2 card. Now I will mount this panel onto Nina Solar White um, 80 pound cardstock because of the thickness. I do add some foam tape to the back of the bear and um, and then of course the panel so that the interactive um, mechanism is able to work. So there is just a little bit of bulk. I didn't want to add that 110 pound cardstock to make it, sorry, to make it that much thicker. So I'm coloring in these flowers. I also go back in uh, off camera and color some flowers that I put behind on the stitched hillside border. I use the same color combination that I used here and um, which is just the uh, B markers that I used earlier and the, uh, what was it, B3739 and then the R2427 for the red flowers. And then I think I use like a YG17. In fact, yep, YG17 to color in the leaves. Then I'm going to take this over to my brother's scan and cut. I will cut it out and clip off the fox from the wagon so that I can use the wagon. I will, at the end of this video, come back in because I decided that I wanted the hedgehog to have one more balloon and I wanted to add a snail that is also in this stamp set. So I'm coming in with my tumbled glass using some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending with my Amazon craft brushes and then I will come back in and deepen this up on the edges uh, with the salty ocean and I absolutely love this color combination. I think it makes the most vibrant blue sky. I will cut the uh, puffy cloud out of Nina 80 pound cardstock as well, so white cardstock, and then you'll see that I fit it to my panel and I will cut it all back down. I love the way that this came out. The Distress Oxides are not what I typically use. I think if you watched my last video, I talked about how much more I appreciate the Distress inks, but for this project, I wanted to get a nice smooth blend for the sky because I knew I wasn't going to be doing any stenciling of clouds. I wanted to use that little cloud in the corner as a place for my sentiment. Now, when you see that, that I stamp my sentiment. I will stamp it more on the higher side just because I want to make sure that it's not completely, it'll be a little bit covered, but not completely covered by the hedgehog when I move it with the mechanism. I took that uh, stitched hillside border and cut two of them out, and I just have this spare piece of cardstock again from an MFT set and I wanted it to be um, I didn't like I wanted the shape to be a certain way and so that's why I put those pencil lines there so that I can take my tonic guillotine trimmer and cut it in the manner that I want it to lay on my card and then I'll come in with that second little border and lay that behind it typically I would have used um, I would have used some dimensional foam on the back of the front one, but again, because I knew I was going to pop up the bear and the flag, and then I had to pop up the back panel, I just didn't want it to be overly bulky, and so I chose not to. I'm trying to figure out where I want all of my elements to be, because I do need to come in with the first portion of that seesaw slider die, and that is going to be where I put my critters. So it's going to be the slider mechanism that allows my critters to move. Here's where I'm marking off what I need to cut from the cloud. And again, this was just a scrap piece of paper. So I try as often as I can to use scrap pieces of paper uh, instead of you know, cutting down a full sheet and then using a quarter sheet for my projects. 
I try to keep my quarter sheets for my card bases. So here I'm just laying it out and I do need to put my hillsides on first to make sure that um, the mechanism has gone through those portions. I could have, there's a little piece that cuts out and a lot of people will glue it to their uh, card base so that there is no white showing behind the critters but the white really wasn't something that I care about and I don't think that it's um I don't think that it looks terrible you let me know do you I mean do you really care if the back side is the same as the front when you um pull the tab and lift up your critters I don't know does it matter I used my purple tape to tape that down where I wanted to go. This is the first this is the first of many pieces. There you go. There is the rest of it. It has those little what uh Angie from LDRS likes to call the little footballs. You can see that that was a piece of scrap paper that I cut all of those elements from. Again, I try not to waste a lot in my craft room. So you fold two of them in half, you line them up next to each other, you lay a full football on the front side, and then I will turn it over and take another football and I will lay it on the back side. I will cover those up on the back side. I'm going to take two more for this side and do the exact same thing. And now is where I'm going to flip this over. Now this is the first time that I have used this particular die. I am not, as I may have said earlier, an interactive card person. I don't, it's not my go-to, but after doing this and seeing how easy it was, I think that I am going to be using this just a little bit more. See on the left, you see those are the little pieces that I was talking about that I could have lined my panel up and I could have laid those down behind, but I chose not to. So now I have a, a nice little place for my critters to lay. Those are two pieces of foam dots so that I have a little bit of dimension there so that the critters are not glued directly to the little footballs. And I thought that those needed to go inside my little slider piece, but that is not the case. I'm going to need a couple more little foam squares. Here I'm taking a brad. There, uh, When I cut those two lines that are going to move my critters, it also cut a hole in the center of the card so that this little slider mechanism can be, um, I can put a brad there. Now is where I'm coming in with those extra pieces of foam tape and those will be, uh, those will keep my mechanism from, for, for moving freely. So it's going to keep it off the base of my uh, card. It's going to put a little bit of space between that and the card base. I'm going to put a football over that. And I am just continually checking to see if this slides well. I will, I left it in here. I will show that I put an extra piece of foam adhesive behind this panel. And it did prevent my mechanism from moving freely once I glue it back down. Here's where I'm trying to decide, do I want to put those on my card base or not? And I said, eh, I don't care. And so, um, so anyway, I will show that I did have to take this back up. So these are two little tabs. You just fold them over where the score lines are. And I am going to take my tweezers, hold it together for just a few minutes. These will keep my tab from being too loose around the back of my card base. I decided that I wanted to glue two of those together so I had a little more sturdy tab. And this is the second kind of guide, I guess you would call it. And I will glue that together. I'm using art glitter glue on this particular project. And you just want to be really careful when you're using wet glue as opposed to 
um, a tape runner because you want to make sure that it does nothing glues straight to the panel. So I'm just checking my video. Um, Angie has a nice video on how to put this together and I just wanted to make sure since this is the first time that I'm doing it that I'm putting it in the right place. I'm going to slide my guides over my pull tab and then I'm just going to put that underneath. Now on that pull tab, there is a marking. There's a nice little marking there so you know right where you need to stop and right where your phone square needs to go. So I'm going to put another little football over that and that will keep everything in place. There we go, sideways and I am working really well. So now we're going to start building my card. I, As I said, I am going to put some, uh, I think it's called X Factor uh, foam tape from Amazon. That will go on the back of my bear and back of the flag. I'm going to make sure that I put it in a position that's not going to impede the movement of the rabbit or the hedgehog. Uh, I did take my white gel pen on that hedgehog balloon and I did put a, just a little accent mark there. And here's where I'm just gluing my little critters on. I'm going to make sure, see, make sure that nothing is hitting that uh, hedgehog and nothing's in the way of the rabbit. I'm going to glue my little cloud in the corner. And again, that's a place for me to um, add my sentiment. I didn't want my sentiment just simply floating on that blue background, and I knew I didn't want to use a banner of any kind. I thought that the cloud would just be, you know, a cute little addition to the scene. So you can see right there that I don't have any of the flowers, and then I'm going to pop back in, and I didn't turn my camera on, and I decided that I did want some flowers because it was just a little bit too plain on those hillsides. Everything is working perfectly. You'll see that I lay down my fun foam. I'm checking my camera to make sure my video, making sure there's nothing else that I'm missing. And then I am going to, oh, it was, it was, uh, there was a piece of that, uh, paper that was sticking up that was impeding my little hedgehog. So I'm going to come in with that tape and see those little pieces I end up removing those because I didn't realize when I start sliding that mechanism that it eventually starts to um, stick to it so I have to pull the entire panel up I got super lucky because I would have cried I really would have cried had this not come together um, come off that panel well. So this is the way that I put my card bases on and I'm lining everything up and I still, even using that because of the foam tape, I still misaligned it. So I'm going to pull it up a little bit. I'm going to fix it and there we go. There's my head. Typically don't see my head in there, but there was my head because I just couldn't see. I was having such a hard time in with that foam tape. So I'm going to get it all aligned and there we go. I see that I can't, that that's not moving, so I'm going to have to pull some of those tabs off, move some of that tape, re-glue it back down with a little bit of that art glitter glue and then it works perfectly. So there, which way is it going to go? You know, I just watched a friend of mine video, a friend of mine's video, and she glued her card on the wrong way, the panel, and I was just giggling because I have done that. Have you ever done that? That is something that I have done before, where I put my panel on upside down. Fortunately, this time I did not. Thank goodness. Here's that hip hip hooray. I am going to stamp it using Pink Fresh Studios Candy Apple Red Ink. I'm just making sure that it's not too high, but it's high enough that it is not going to be completely covered when that hedgehog flies. 
and this stamped beautifully. This whole stamp set, MFT just has quality products. Jamie does have this in her shop, so I encourage you to head on over to her store. The new Trinity stamp releases out, the new LDRS. Oh my goodness, so many cute products that are out right now. Summertime is my absolute favorite time, and I just I want everything. I, I just want everything. I did, uh, this is where I'm cutting off that uh, wag, the balloon from the little fox, and I'm going to add it. I used the same blue, blues, the B37 and the 39. I'm obviously not going to glue the balloon backing, but I am going to glue the string, and I'm going to glue the back of that red balloon so that they can meet. I'm putting down my little snail, making sure that it does not get in the way of my hedgehog again. And that is pretty much going to be my card. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please head over to Jamie's shop. She has amazing products, amazing customer service. She is one of the sweetest people that you could ever talk to in your entire life. So please head over there and show her some love. Thank you so much for watching. I will again list all the products that I've used in the description box below. I'll be back, I believe, in two weeks with a second project using this same set. Leave a comment. Let me know. Do you like interactive cards? Um, what do you think of this cutie patootie? And until next time, have a fabulous day. Thanks again for watching.